It was the middle of autumn when Jack Harper found himself driving along Route 49, a lonesome, winding road cutting through miles of dense forest. Route 49 had a reputation that made locals shudder. They called it the Lost Road, though no one could remember exactly where the name came from. It was said to be haunted, with tales of phantom hitchhikers, ghost cars, and strange, unexplainable happenings. Jack, however, was not one to believe in such nonsense. He was simply trying to get home after a late shift at work, following a shortcut that his GPS claimed would save him 20 minutes. The night was unusually dark, clouds blanketing the sky and obscuring the moon. His car headlights were the only source of illumination, carving narrow beams through the black void of the road ahead. As the minutes dragged on, Jack found himself growing increasingly uneasy. There were no streetlights, no signs of life, just the twisting road and the oppressive forest that seemed to close in tighter with every mile. A sense of isolation weighed on him. He hadn't passed another car in nearly 30 minutes, and his radio was picking up nothing but static. Jack turned it off, leaving only the sound of his tires on the asphalt and the hum of the engine to fill the eerie silence. Suddenly, in the periphery of his vision, Jack saw something dart across the road. It was so quick he barely had time to react, slamming on his brakes as his car skidded to a halt. His heart pounded in his chest as he looked around, trying to catch sight of whatever it was. A deer, maybe? No, it had been too small and moved too fast. As he peered through the windshield, Jack's blood ran cold. Standing at the edge of the road, barely illuminated by his headlights, was a figure. It was a woman, dressed in a white gown that hung loosely from her thin frame. She didn't seem to move, just stood there, facing the trees, her long black hair flowing down her back. Jack sat frozen, staring at her. His mind raced, trying to make sense of the situation. Had she been the one who darted in front of the car? Why was she out here, in the middle of nowhere, at this hour? He rolled down his window a crack, feeling the chill of the night air seep in. Hey, are you okay? He called out, his voice sounding small and unsure. The woman didn't respond. She didn't even turn around. Jack's unease grew into full-blown dread. Something was terribly wrong. He could feel it in his gut. Every instinct screamed at him to drive away, but a small, nagging voice in the back of his mind mind urged him to help. What if she was injured? Lost? With a deep breath, Jack made his decision. He unbuckled his seatbelt and opened the door, the cold air rushing in and causing him to shiver. He stepped out cautiously, keeping his eyes on the woman. Hey, do you need help? He called again, louder this time. Still, she didn't move. Jack's heart pounded harder as he took a few steps toward her, the gravel crunching beneath his boots. He was close enough now to see the details of her gown. It was old, tattered, like something from a different era. Her bare feet were dirty, caked in mud. Something about her posture was unnatural, rigid, unsettling. Ma'am? Jack's voice cracked as he reached out a hand, as if to tap her shoulder. The instant his fingers grazed the fabric of her gown, the woman moved, but not in a way Jack could have anticipated. Her body jerked violently, as if yanked by invisible strings. She spun around so fast that Jack stumbled back in shock. He stared in horror as her face came into view. Her eyes were hollow, empty black voids. Her mouth stretched impossibly wide into a twisted grin, revealing teeth too sharp and too many. A sound erupted from her. Something between a scream and a laugh, so shrill it made Jack's ears ring. His blood turned to ice as the woman lunged toward him. Jack didn't think. He bolted back to his car, his hands trembling as he fumbled for the door handle. He could hear her behind him, the sound of her bare feet slapping against the pavement, he could feel her presence closing in on him, her breath cold on the back of his neck. Just as he managed to throw himself into the driver's seat, she reached the car. Her pale hands slammed against the window, leaving a smear of something dark and wet. Jack didn't wait. He slammed the door shut and hit the gas, tires screeching as his car lurched forward. His heart raced as he sped down the road, the rearview mirror showing nothing but darkness behind him. For a few moments, all he could hear was the sound of his own ragged breathing and the roar of the engine. But then, something shifted in the air. A cold presence settled in the car with him. Jack's hands tightened on the steering wheel as the temperature inside the vehicle plummeted. His breath came out in visible puffs, fogging up the glass. Suddenly, the radio flickered to life on its own. At first, it was static, 
Then a voice, faint and garbled, crackled through the speakers. You shouldn't have stopped, the voice whispered, distorted but unmistakable. It was the woman's voice. Jack's heart nearly stopped. His eyes flicked to the passenger seat where, in the faint glow of the dashboard, he saw her sitting right beside him. Her hollow eyes were locked on him, her twisted smile stretching even wider. The car veered as Jack screamed, swerving to avoid the ditch. He stomped on the accelerator, pushing the car faster and faster, desperate to escape. But no matter how fast he went, he could feel her gaze, cold and unrelenting, boring into him. Her voice filled the car now, whispering, laughing, taunting. You'll never leave, she said, her voice echoing in his head. You're mine now. The last thing Jack saw before the car careened off the road and into the trees was her face, inches from his, that haunting grin, the only thing he'd ever remember. Story number two. It was supposed to be a simple trip home, but it became something far darker, something no one could explain. Jack was driving through a desolate stretch of highway that ran through the countryside, heading home from his late shift at the factory. The clock on his dashboard blinked 2.37 a.m. in dull green numbers. The only sound was the hum of his tires on the asphalt and the occasional chirp of static from the radio. He liked driving at night, no traffic, just empty roads and his thoughts. But tonight felt different. The air was heavy and a strange tension settled over the highway like a suffocating fog. As the road stretched ahead, seemingly endless under the glow of his headlights, he realized he hadn't seen another car for miles. Not a soul, just him, the road, and the dark woods on either side. After about 20 minutes of driving in eerie silence, the night became even more unsettling. His headlights caught the faintest glimpse of movement, a figure on the side of the road, standing at the edge of the forest. Jack's heart skipped a beat. At first, he thought it was a deer or maybe some animal, but as he approached, he saw it clearly, a woman standing perfectly still in a long white dress. Her black hair hung over her face, hiding her features. He slowed down instinctively. What's a woman doing out here alone this late at night? His hands gripped the steering wheel tighter. Something about her seemed off. She wasn't waving for help or making any attempt to flag him down. She just stood there, her head slightly tilted, watching his car as it passed. Jack's chest tightened. He kept driving, resisting the urge to look in his rearview mirror. But curiosity got the better of him. One quick glance, he thought. His eyes flicked to the mirror and his stomach turned cold. She was gone. Jack pressed harder on the gas, his palms sweating against the wheel. He told himself it was just his imagination. Maybe it was a trick of the shadows, or maybe she had walked back into the woods. But deep down, he knew something wasn't right. A mile further down the road, his radio, silent until now, crackled to life with a burst of static. The interference hissed and popped, and for a moment he thought he could hear a faint whisper through the static. The words were garbled, incomprehensible, like someone trying to speak from the other side of a thick glass. Then the whisper became clear for a second. Don't stop, keep driving. Jack's blood ran cold. His heart pounded so loudly he could hear it in his ears. He reached for the volume dial, but before he could turn the radio off, the whisper cut off abruptly. Silence returned to the car, thick and suffocating. His pulse raced as he tried to shake off the unease. It's just static. You're tired. That's all. But he knew better. There was something wrong with this road, with this night. Just as he was convincing himself to focus, something moved in the corner of his eye. A flicker. Jack gritted his teeth and glanced to the right. There she was again. The same woman in the same white dress standing at the side of the road just ahead. Her head was tilted, the black curtain of her hair still covering her face. How did she get here? Jack's heart dropped. He was driving over 60 miles per hour. There was no way she could have made it this far on foot. Yet, there she stood as if waiting for him. He didn't slow down this time. He pressed the accelerator and sped past her, refusing to look at her directly. But he knew she was there. He could feel her presence, cold and heavy, pressing against him. Once again, he couldn't resist. Just one look in the mirror. Jack's breath hitched. She was standing in the middle of the road behind him, illuminated in the red glow of his taillights. She hadn't been there a second ago. She had appeared as if out of thin air. And now she was facing him. Her head was tilted at a strange angle, as if her neck was broken. His hands trembled as he gripped the wheel tighter. 
He glanced at the road ahead, but when his eyes returned to the mirror, she was sitting in the back seat. Jack slammed on the brakes. His car screeched to a halt and his body jerked forward, the seatbelt digging into his chest. He gasped for breath, heart hammering against his ribs. Slowly, he turned his head toward the back seat, expecting to see her. But the seat was empty. The silence in the car was deafening. Jack's pulse raced as he scanned the highway through the windows. Nothing. No woman. No movement. Just the dark forest, stretching endlessly into the night. He let out a shaky laugh, trying to convince himself it was all in his head. You're overtired. That's all. Just get home. He shifted the car into drive and pressed on the gas. The car rolled forward. A few minutes later, the highway began to look familiar. Relief washed over him. He was getting close to home. But just as his heart started to calm, his headlights revealed something up ahead. The woman. She stood in the center of the road this time, directly in his path. There was no time to swerve. Jack slammed on the brakes, tires screaming as the car skidded toward her. For a brief second, her face lifted and he saw her eyes. They were hollow. Empty sockets, black as the void, staring straight into his soul. The car screeched to a stop, and Jack sat frozen, hands gripping the wheel so tightly his knuckles turned white. He looked around wildly, searching for her. But she was gone. Jack's chest heaved as he struggled to catch his breath. This can't be real, he thought. It can't be real. He shifted the car into drive again, desperate to get off this cursed stretch of road. But then, from the back seat, he heard it. A soft whisper, close to his ear. You shouldn't have stopped. The cold breath sent shivers down his spine, and before Jack could react, the lights on his dashboard flickered and the engine stalled. And the last thing he saw in the dim glow of his dying headlights was the reflection of the woman in the rearview mirror, her face twisted into a grin that was far too wide, far too inhuman. The whisper came one last time, barely audible. You belong to the night now. The engine sputtered, the lights went out, and the darkness swallowed him whole. Story number three. Tyler had always loved night drives. The open road, the cool air, and the absence of other cars made him feel at peace. After a long day at the office, the thought of a quiet drive home on a rural back road sounded perfect. His route was familiar, a stretch of desolate highway flanked by thick woods dotted only by the occasional farmhouse. That night, however, something was different. As Tyler merged onto Route 22, he noticed an unusually dense fog creeping across the road. It wasn't uncommon to get fog in these parts, but this was like nothing he had seen before. The mist was thick, swirling around the trees and curling onto the pavement like ghostly fingers. Tyler flicked on his high beams, but it didn't help much. The fog absorbed the light, making it even harder to see. He slowed the car to a crawl, gripping the wheel a little tighter. His GPS, mounted on the dash, was silent. Tyler had traveled this road countless times and didn't need directions, but tonight, the dark felt different, more ominous. The fog thickened as Tyler pressed on, reducing his visibility to just a few feet ahead. The trees loomed on either side like towering shadows, and soon the usual landmarks, the abandoned gas station, the old barn, disappeared in the swirling white abyss. Then, in the midst of the fog, Tyler saw something. Just ahead, in the middle of the road, a shadowy figure stood motionless. He slammed on the brakes, his car screeching to a halt just a few yards from the figure. Heart pounding, Tyler squinted through the windshield. The figure was vaguely human, but its proportions were all wrong. Its arms were too long, its neck too thin. It stood unnaturally still, almost as if it was waiting for him. Just some guy stranded in the fog, Tyler told himself, trying to ignore the chill creeping up his spine. Um, he tapped the horn lightly, hoping the sound would scare off whatever it was or signal that help was on the way. The figure didn't move. Unease gnawed at him, but Tyler knew he couldn't just leave the person there. What if they were in trouble? Against his better judgment, he rolled down the window slightly. Hey, you okay? He called out, his voice echoing eerily in the fog. There was no response. The figure didn't even turn to acknowledge him. Something was off. Tyler could feel it deep in his gut. His skin prickled, a cold sweat breaking out on his neck. The figure wasn't just standing, it was wrong. Twisted unnatural, like something pretending to be human but missing all the details. He decided to drive around it. Slowly, he steered his car to the left, creeping past the figure. As his headlights swept across it, Tyler caught a glimpse of its face. 
or what should have been a face. There was nothing. Just smooth, blank skin where eyes and a mouth should have been. It was as if someone had erased its features completely. Tyler's breath caught in his throat. His hands trembled as he pressed down on the gas pedal. The car sped forward, tires kicking up bits of gravel as he raced away. His heart pounded against his chest. The image of the faceless figure burned into his mind. Just as he thought he was leaving it behind, a loud thunk reverberated from the roof of his car. Tyler jerked in his seat, panic surging through him. Something had landed on top of the car. He could feel the weight of it pressing down, the suspension groaning under the strain. The fog outside swirled faster, thicker, as if the world around him was closing in. Suddenly, the car jerked violently, like something heavy had shifted on the roof. Tyler's knuckles whitened as he gripped the wheel, barely able to control the vehicle. Whatever was on the roof was moving. A scratching noise, sharp, deliberate, began just above him. It was as though claws were being dragged across the metal, slow and methodical. Tyler's stomach twisted in fear. The thing up there was trying to get in. With his heart in his throat, Tyler pressed down on the gas, speeding faster along the narrow road. But the scratching only grew louder, more insistent. His mind raced. Could, could it be that thing? The faceless figure? How had it gotten on top of the car? Suddenly, the scratching stopped. Silence fell, broken only by the hum of the engine and Tyler's ragged breathing. He didn't dare look up. He didn't dare stop. All he could do was keep driving, praying that whatever it was had gone. But then, out of the corner of his eye, he saw movement. Slowly, something shifted in his rearview mirror. Tyler's blood ran cold. The faceless figure was now inside the car. It sat in the back seat, its long arms resting awkwardly on its lap. Its head was tilted, as if observing him, though it had no eyes to see. Tyler's mind screamed at him to run, to get out, but his body was frozen with terror. The figure remained silent, its blank face turned toward him. Tyler's heart pounded in his ears as he tried to think. He couldn't pull over. He couldn't stop. Every instinct told him that if he slowed down, if he made any sudden moves, the thing would strike. Suddenly, the figure began to lean forward, its featureless face hovering closer to the back of Tyler's head. He could feel its cold breath on the nape of his neck even though it had no mouth. His vision blurred with panic, the road ahead fading in and out of focus. Without thinking, Tyler slammed on the brakes. The car screeched to a halt, tires smoking on the asphalt. The figure lurched forward, slamming into the dashboard. In the split second before it moved again, Tyler threw the door open and leaped out, hitting the ground hard. He scrambled to his feet, running into the fog, his pulse deafening in his ears. He didn't stop running until the headlights of a truck appeared in the distance, its horn blaring. Tyler collapsed to his knees, waving frantically for help. The truck screeched to a halt, and the driver jumped out, confused but concerned. There was something in my car, Tyler gasped, pointing back at the road. But when they looked, the car was empty. The fog had begun to lift, revealing nothing but an empty highway stretching into the night. Story number four. Eric hated driving at night, but sometimes he had no choice. Tonight was one of those nights. After a family emergency in the next town over, he found himself heading back home well past midnight, driving down a lonely two-lane highway that cut through endless fields of darkness. His headlights pierced the night ahead, but the world beyond the road was nothing but shadows. The drive was long and uneventful. His only companion was the soft hum of the engine and the occasional ping of his phone, messages from his wife checking on him. Eric sighed, promising himself he'd make it home soon. But that's when he saw something that made his heart skip a beat. At the edge of his headlights, just up ahead, stood a lone figure, someone hitchhiking on the side of the road. Who hitchhikes at this hour? Eric thought as he instinctively slowed down. The figure was a man, standing perfectly still with his arm outstretched, thumb up. He wore a heavy coat despite the warm night air and looked down the road as if waiting for someone specific to pick him up. Eric debated with himself for a moment. I shouldn't stop. It's too risky. But guilt gnawed at him. What if this man really needed help? What if his car had broken down and he was stranded in the middle of nowhere? Against his better judgment, Eric eased his car to a stop beside the hitchhiker and rolled down the passenger window slightly. You need a ride? He called out. The man didn't answer at first. 
He just stood there, staring down the empty highway as if he hadn't heard. Then, without looking at Eric, he nodded slowly. There was something unsettling about his stillness, but before Eric could change his mind, the man walked around the front of the car and opened the passenger door. Thanks, the man said, sliding into the seat. His voice was hoarse, almost like a whisper. Eric forced a smile and hit the gas, getting back onto the highway. So where are you headed? He asked, trying to keep things casual. The man shrugged, staring straight ahead. Anywhere's fine. Just need to get away. Eric felt a chill crawl down his spine. Get away from what? The fuck, he wondered, but didn't ask. The man's strange behavior set him on edge. He looked ordinary enough, about Eric's age, mid-thirties, with dark hair and pale skin. But there was something off about him. His clothes looked old, like they had been pulled from a different decade, and his hands, resting motionlessly in his lap, were covered in dirt. For the next few miles, the man said nothing, and the silence became unbearable. Eric turned on the radio, hoping to cut through the tension, but all he could get was static. That radio's no good, the man said suddenly, making Eric jump. Eric chuckled nervously. Yeah, signal's bad out here. Happens all the time. The man didn't respond. Instead, he turned his head slowly and stared at Eric with dark, sunken eyes. You ever pick up hitchhikers before? Eric shook his head, gripping the steering wheel tighter. No, first time, actually. The man's lips curled into a thin smile. Dangerous thing to do, you know, picking up strangers on a lonely road like this. Eric swallowed, his heart pounding harder. Well, I guess I got lucky then. You don't seem dangerous. The man didn't answer, just kept that unsettling smile on his face as he turned his gaze back to the road. They drove in silence for a while longer, the darkness pressing in from all sides. Eric tried to keep calm, but the man's presence gnawed at him. Every time he glanced over, the hitchhiker seemed wrong. His face, though ordinary at first glance, felt unnatural under the flickering light from the dashboard, like he was wearing a mask that didn't quite fit. Then the man spoke again, his voice softer this time, almost wistful. Do you believe in ghosts? Eric forced a laugh, though his throat felt tight. Not really. Do you? The hitchhiker smiled that strange smile again. I think I might be one. Eric's chest tightened with fear. He gripped the wheel so hard his knuckles turned white. He's messing with me. He's just trying to freak me out. But then the man turned fully toward him and Eric saw something that made his blood run cold. The man's reflection wasn't in the window. In fact, the passenger seat in the glass looked empty, like there was no one sitting there at all. Eric's breath hitched and his mind raced. What the hell is this? What's happening? You all right, driver? The man asked, his voice dripping with amusement. Eric's hands trembled on the wheel, lit, but he forced himself to nod. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. The man grinned wider, his teeth unnaturally white in the dim light. Good, you'll need to be. Suddenly, the car's interior lights flickered, and the engine stuttered. The headlights dimmed for a moment, plunging them into near darkness before they sputtered back on. Eric's heart pounded in his chest as panic gripped him. Pull over, the hitchhiker said calmly, as if giving a suggestion. We're almost there. Eric stared at the man in confusion. Almost where? The hitchhiker leaned in closer, his breath cold against Eric's neck. Home. Eric's skin crawled, and a deep sense of dread flooded his mind. He slammed his foot on the gas, determined to get away from the man, but the car groaned in protest. The engine sputtered again, and the car began to slow, as if some invisible full force was holding it back. The man chuckled softly. You shouldn't have stopped. Eric's eyes darted to the rearview mirror. And that's when he saw it. The road behind him was gone, replaced by a swirling void of shadows. No trees, no highway, just an endless black emptiness chasing them down the road. Terrified, Eric slammed his foot on the brake, desperate to stop. The car skidded to a halt and the man turned to him one last time, grinning from ear to ear. Thanks for the ride, the man whispered. And then, just like that, he was gone. Eric sat frozen in the driver's seat, heart racing, gasping for breath. The passenger seat was empty. The door was closed, no sign of the man anywhere. For a moment, Eric thought it was over. Maybe it was just a nightmare. Maybe I imagined it. But then from the back seat, he heard it. Soft breathing, slow and steady as if someone was sitting right behind him. Eric didn't dare turn around.